What's up, you guys? Void here coming back at y'all with another Commander Deck Tech video for one of my patrons. This one is for Ugamon, one of my oldest patrons. I think he is my oldest patron. He wanted me to do a Teneb the Harvester deck, which is awesome because I haven't done one yet. And usually when you want to go with Reanimator in these colors, you go with Carador. So it's nice to change things up a little bit. If you're unfamiliar with Teneb, whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you get to pay three mana. If you do, you put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So so maybe not the most efficient way of bringing a creature back, but you have the option of putting a creature card from any graveyard, a graveyard, onto the battlefield under your control. So it's different than Carador, where you can just recast creatures from your graveyard. You have the option of choosing something, stealing something from your opponents. So we're pretty much just going to fool around with that in a similar way with Carador. Going to be a reanimator based deck, so we can do a lot of the things that you would do with that deck, but it's going to be a little bit more focused around Teneb, trying to swing in, getting that trigger as far as our lands go we're just playing basic mana fixing in these colors nothing out of the ordinary nothing for utility just making sure that we have the mana that we need for our artifacts we have eight of them our obvious soul ring because you can never really go wrong there felwar stone and the three signets within these colors i think is a good idea if you want to get to neb out there quicker you want to make sure you have two things good ramp and good mana fixing and those provide a lot of it then we have lightning greaves and swiftfoot boots Again, it's based around attacking with Taneb, making sure that he has either Hexproof Shroud and especially Haste is pretty cool. And then we finish off our artifacts with a Commander Sphere to give us whatever mana we need in these three colors. Moving on to our creatures, a more creature-based deck, I would say. 28 of them. We have Quasali Pride Mage. This one is one of my favorites. If you're going to go with a reanimator strategy in Obzone colors, you should probably think about Quasali. You don't really care about the Exalted, but for the fact that you have something that can sack itself to destroy an artifact or an enchantment is always brilliant. The Exalted is just a bonus. Safi Eric's Daughter, yet another reason to play a reanimator strategy in these colors. There are a lot of combos associated with Safi. Unfortunately, I don't think this deck is going to play any of them, but she is always nice if you want to fool around, get some more ETBs. We have a Sakura Tribe Elder. Never hurts to get more mana. Eternal Witness. This is graveyard based, and even if it isn't, it's still a pretty good green deck. Why not get something good back from our graveyard? Flesh Bag Marauder. Doesn't really hurt to bring this back even if you're paying three mana with Teneb to get it back forcing an opponent to sacrifice a really good creature especially if they're playing Voltron is amazing. Reclamation Sage can't really beat good creatures with ETBs. This is going to deal with a lot of stuff. Wood Elves ETBs and gets us a land, a forest. You know pretty basic, pretty simple. Then we have a Yavi Maya Elder can sacrifice itself to allow us to draw a card which is nice. Bringing it back gets you more value but when it's put into a graveyard from the battlefield you get to search for two basics. So you get to draw a card and then you get to search for the basics. A lot of value, a lot of advantage off of a Yavi Maya Elder. Then we of course play Disciple of Bolus. Very underrated creature but really fits in well in a lot of these reanimator based decks. If you can keep bringing it back, it's going to keep you in a lot of games, gain you a bunch of life, and allow you to draw a bunch of cards. We have a Gerard Gilgori Lich Lord. Gets bigger based off of the number of creatures in your graveyard, which doesn't really matter too much, but his activated ability is pure power. Sacrificing another creature and having each opponent lose life equal to its power is brilliant. You can keep bringing creatures back, keep sacking them. Even if you ignore the fact that he can bring himself back by having you sacrifice a swamp in a forest, He's still amazing. We have a Marin of Clan Neltoth because we're a reanimator deck and it's not uncommon to have creatures die. Bringing them back even if it is just to our hand is still pretty sweet. Solemn Simulacrum is one of the best value creatures that you can throw into any deck and especially ones where you love getting ETBs. Acidic Slime kind of like Rex Sage but can also hit lands and also has Death Touch. Then we have a Karmic Guide. It's a reanimator deck, has protection from black, don't really care too much about that. But bringing this one back means that you can bring yet another creature back. So if you want to attack with Teneb, bring back your Karmic Guide, it's going to bring back something else. So you have a chain of creatures that are going to keep bringing themselves back. And Karmic Guide is pretty sweet. Revilark is a pretty cool card. In combination with Karmic Guide, it can bring it back when it leaves the battlefield. Not as easy to have that happen though in the stack, unless you want to evoke it for 6 mana. But it can bring some other creatures back as well. Citizen Undead Vis Zier, a tutor on a creature, you have an exploit trigger, so if you really want a creature to die, you can have that happen. Otherwise, you could just have Sadissi exploit herself, which isn't really flavorful, but still works. Grave Titan enters the battlefield, gets us some zombies, also does it when it attacks. One of the best six drops in the game. 
Speaking of awesome six drops, we also have Kokosho and Sun Titan, but Kokosho is really an all-star in just about every single deck where you can constantly bring it back. Having each opponent lose five life whenever it dies, I mean, keep bringing it back, more and more value. And then of course the Sun Titan is just going to get us back stuff like Safi, Eric's Daughter, really sweet reanimation value in this deck. We have an Elish Norn because hey, why not? If you want to get some good creature value in there, never really hurts to throw in a good Praetor. You're going to buff up all your creatures with a nice Anthem and make your opponent's creatures much smaller. A Rune Scar Demon, awesome ETBs like I said before, can't really beat a good tutor. We have a Sepulchral Primordial. Like a lot of the Primordials, they do stuff depending on the number of your opponents. So you get to do one for each. In this case, you're going to be reanimating a creature from their graveyard. So you have the potential of getting the best stuff from your opponent's graveyards, bringing them back, and can really get out of hand. Then we have a Shouldered Whispering One as far as reanimation decks go. Having something on your upkeep that can bring other creatures back is pretty nice. It also forces your opponents to sacrifice their creatures, so dual purposed. Ashen Rider is awesome. This card needs to see even more play. Enters the battlefield, exiles a permanent. When it dies, it also exiles a permanent, so you get a lot of value if you have a sack outlet, if you have anything that can reanimate creatures. You have the potential of just dealing with so many problems. Carador goes Chieftain, as I stated before, in these colors. Never really hurts to go with some of the best cards, even if they are commanders from other decks. And Carador can definitely give us some value from our graveyard. Awesome cost reduction, and very similar to Marin. Razaketh, getting more tutors, you're sacrificing creatures. Amazing, you don't have to pay any more mana into him. And a pretty decent creature at that, an 8-8 Flampler for 8 mana. We have a Terastodon, awesome ETBs. Bring it back over and over again and you can really mess up someone's mana base. That's usually what I end up doing, but also amazing against Super Friends decks. You get to destroy their Planeswalkers. And then our Raya Dawnbringer is going to fit in with the rest of the deck when it comes to bringing creatures back. It's during our upkeep we get to bring a creature back from our graveyard to the battlefield. So very similar to Shouldred. Moving on to our enchantments, we have 8 of them. Animate Dead, pretty much straight to the point. 2 mana, brings a creature back, and this enchants it. Sylvan Library is going to get us some more card draw at the cost of life at times. Still pretty sweet. Aura Shards, we're going to have some creatures entering the battlefield. Maybe not as many as some other decks that are going to play this card, but it's still amazing removal. You can get multiple triggers in a game and really mess up some good artifact decks, good enchantment based decks. The value is just undeniable. Pernicious Deed is amazing. It's amazing board wipe. You have a lot of presence here. Your opponents are going to be afraid of doing stuff. It's going to be amazing. If you have any way of bringing this back from your graveyard to your hand, replaying it, this is going to put you far ahead in the game. Phyrexian Arena, just good value consistency at the cost of life. Mirari's Wake is going to give you double mana. Doesn't really matter what land you're tapping. It's going to tap for another mana. Pretty awesome staple in Celestia. Deadbridge Chant. Awesome enchantment for any graveyard based deck. Because you're just going to be filling your graveyard with awesome cards. And likely you're probably going to hit a creature or two. The cool thing though is that you get to randomly choose at the beginning of your upkeep one card and if it's a creature card you put it onto the battlefield otherwise it just goes to your hand so really awesome the potential to get something really deadly from your graveyard is the main reason why i have it in here but there's also a debtor's now so it's basically like a raya trigger a soldier trigger but instead of just your graveyard it's any graveyard and you put it into play under your control so really disgusting and then moving on from that we have 10 sorceries we have demonic tutor pretty straightforward gets us the best card that we want at the time then we have buried alive pretty much the same idea but for creatures we get to search up three of them put them into our graveyard we have those options then we have the staples and cultivate and kadama's reach really awesome for mana fixing if we desperately need a certain color but more importantly it's going to help thin out our deck a little bit and get two basic lands we have a victimize because it never really hurts to get two creatures back from our graveyard to the battlefield even if it is tapped all at the cost of three mana and sacrificing a creature we really don't care about gerard's orders searching up two creatures putting one of them into our hand and the other in our graveyard is really nice if we have karmic guide and a really deadly creature like a razaketh 
Terastodon, anything that if we bring it back, it's going to immediately impact the game. Wrath of God, pretty simple. You know why it's in here. Um, Burial Rites, the flashback is just amazing. Really underrated card. Your opponents usually don't see it coming until it's too late, but you flash it back for only four mana, bringing your creature back from the graveyard to the battlefield. Then we have a Life's Finale, yet another Wrath of God, basically, but after you destroy all creatures, then you search a target opponent's library for up to three creature cards, and you put them into their graveyard. So after you're done swinging with Teneb, you pay his activation cost for the trigger, and then you bring back one of those awesome creatures. So it's exactly why it's in here. And then we finish up our sorceries with a Boneyard Parlay. You exile up the five target creature cards from graveyards, and then an opponent separates those cards into two piles. So it's kind of like a factor fiction, but for graveyards. And then you put all cards from one of those piles into your hand and the other back into their graveyards. So really sweet card. Moving on to our instance, we have eight of them. Swords to Plowshares, Eladomri's Call, Instant Speed, Tutoring Up a Creature. Definitely deserve the reprint in Masters 25. It deserves a spot in so many Celestia decks. We have an Abzan Charm. This one is really sweet. Exiling your creature is always nice, but you also have the option at Instant Speed to draw two cards and lose two life. So it's going to be good card draw, and it's also going to be removal if you need it, which is perfect if you have those options in this type of deck. We don't really care too much about the plus one plus one counters, by the way. Anguished on making the ultimate exiling removal belongs in every single deck within these colors. Cross and Grip is going to deal with pesky artifacts and enchantments, usually good against combos. The split second is really difficult to avoid. We have Mortify going to deal with a creature or an enchantment for three mana instant speed. And then we have a Putrefy, same thing, but instead of enchantments, it's going to deal with artifacts. And also it can't be regenerated. And then we have an Utter End to finish up the deck tech, going to exile a target non-land permanent for four mana instant speed. So a lot of decent removal to back up what we already have to be a pretty decent reanimation deck. While Taneb isn't my go-to commander for a graveyard strategy, he's not the worst thing I've ever seen in a commander. You do have a way to bring back an awesome creature, which is never a bad thing. The only downside I would say is that you have to connect with him first. And usually, as soon as you get anything like a Lightning Greaves on him, the turn you get him out, you're not going to be able to pay that mana because you probably don't have anything left. So not only do you have to connect, but you usually have to wait a full turn in order to free up some mana in order to pay that three and then bring a creature back anyway. But really, you're pretty much going to be using a lot of the same things that you would in a Carador deck, but just a little bit more attention towards Teneb. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this deck tech. I thought it was really cool. Thanks again, Ugamon, for being an awesome patron of mine. I enjoy doing this deck. I enjoy doing a lot of the other deck techs for you. As always, you guys have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.